Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today I want to talk to you about doing the holiday season when you are no contact specifically with your family. Lots of people go no contact with family for lots of different reasons and it's a very personal decision. But then we go about our lives in this world that has such a focus on families during a holiday season and that can feel terrible. So I want to go over with you a couple of ways that you can sort of survive and maybe even thrive in this holiday season if you are in fact no contact with family. Let's get something really clear really fast. When someone is no contact with their family, they don't owe anyone an explanation. They don't owe anyone really anything. And I see fairly often this disturbing trend where people are like, oh, but it's the only family you'll have. Or, oh, but I'm sure your parent means well. And those phrases are so not helpful. Tip number one, start your own traditions. In addition to a lot of noise being made about families at the holiday time, there's also a lot of noise made about tradition. And one of the things that can be lost when someone is no longer associating themselves with their family is some of those traditions from your childhood as you were growing up that you may still feel nostalgic for or you may still miss. And that can be hard when every commercial you see, every movie on TV, every everything everyone's talking about is about these traditions. So it could be time to start your own traditions. Make them very typical holiday traditions. Make them not holiday traditions at all. But starting your own traditions, those things that embody what you know this season to be about for you, will help you to regain some control over that and also to remind yourself that you do have within you all of the things you need to celebrate the holidays and you don't need anyone else's permission or connection to enjoy the holidays. Number two is very closely linked to that. It's spending time with your chosen family. For many people in the queer community especially, but also people across the board who are not currently in relationship with their family of origin, your chosen family, the people who you choose to bring into your life and the people who know you and love you for exactly who you are, those are the people to do these new traditions with. There's so many ways to really engage in those relationships and mix them in with the new traditions that you're building. So many different options for this season. Maybe you do a Friendsgiving. Maybe it's not even on actual Thanksgiving Day. Maybe it's not day that week, but you all come together and celebrate the thankfulness you have for each other. Maybe you go to one of their homes for one of the holiday celebrations that are coming up over the next few months. Maybe you pick a different friend's home for all the nights of Hanukkah. I don't know what it is that's going to work best for you, but the celebration piece of the holidays does not have to be lost because you have family members that could not understand boundaries well enough to stay in your life. You are not responsible for the bad behavior of your family members. You are not responsible for the things that they put you through that really forced this no contact state into the relationship. No matter how it happens, it is so important that you hear this part. If you have had to make the hard decision to cut ties with family members because of their bad boundaries, their bad behavior, their lack of their own mental health, so many different reasons, right? If you are living that on a regular basis, it can feel lonely in a way that other loneliness doesn't necessarily touch especially when it's a parent, to come face to face with the decision that you are better off without your parent in your life, that can bring up all sorts of old wounds, old doubts, old self-esteem issues. And one of the ways to get through that and remind yourself that you are better off in this situation without those people in your life is to also remind yourself that there are people who do deserve to be in your life. There are people who will support you and love you for exactly who you are. And there are people who will not visit their own mental health struggles on you and expect you to be responsible for them. Whatever the reason is that you are no contact with that family, family member, there are reasons on the other side of that to invite other people into your life who do not do those things to you. But those chosen family members can help to heal some of the things that you are hurting from. Another one is charitable acts or some sort of giving. It can be isolating and heavy to carry during this time the fact that you are not in contact with those family members. Often when people are feeling burdened and feeling weight on themselves, 
something that they can do, this is in no way a mandate, but something that you can do is spend time giving to others. Now, during the holiday season, a lot of charitable organizations have a lot of people volunteering, and it may be hard to find somewhere to volunteer during that time, but this could also be a time when you're familiarizing yourself with what's out there in your community, because long term, you can also be helping with charitable giving. People need help all year, not just at the holidays. (laughs) But if it's the holiday time that sort of initiates initiates that spark in you, I would say go ahead and use it. Give to some other people just to spend an hour or two out of your own head. To give yourself that reprieve of having to think your circular thoughts and process all of the things that maybe you don't need to process for the 17th time. The last one I want you to think about is self-care. Maybe you choose not to do something at all with people during those specific holiday days. Or maybe you just need to take time during those holidays for yourself. Take a bath, get a massage, do something that is for you that does not depend on other people to either be present or to even want to do. Specifically focus on the things you need. What makes you feel relaxed? What makes you feel at ease? What makes you feel indulgent? Do something for yourself that fits into one of those categories. This is the thing about being no contact with family members. You can know that it is the right choice. You can be completely sure of all of the things that have gone down, that have led to that situation and led to you needing to remove these people from your life. But that doesn't mean it's not lonely. And that doesn't mean that you're not mourning a person who's alive. They're just not in your life anymore. And and maybe you're not. Maybe that's not how your situation plays out. That's great. But there's a lot of people out there who, especially post 2020, post 2016 even, who have needed to go no contact with family because of the way their family has treated them or because of the way their family has expected their lives to play out. When you've made the decision to remove relationships from your life because they are harmful to you, one would hope that would be a joyous thing. And for a lot of people, it's just not when we're talking about family members who have hurt us so badly. All of the advice in the world and all of the tips in the world aren't going to take the sting out of that. So this would be my last little bonus tip. Do not change your mind during the holidays. If you are no contact with a family member and you decide to reach out to them at some point, that is your choice and yours alone. But the nostalgia of the holiday season can make us think things are different than they really are. It is really easy to tell ourselves that we're making too much of a situation or tell ourselves that we can handle giving one more chance or two more chances to someone. And that's, again, a personal decision. But during the holidays, there's so much focus on family and that loneliness does sometimes creep up and people have so much to say about those decisions. That's not the time to change your mind. So in that last vein, I would really encourage you to make sure that you're aware of and maybe that you have someone in your life who will help you continue to be aware of the reasons you went no contact in the first place. If in January, February, whatever, you decide to contact somebody, that's your prerogative. But lifting that no contact during the holidays is more often than not influenced by nostalgia and loneliness. And those are not reasons to bring someone back into your life when you had very valid reasons to remove them in the first place. So much like you do with a breakup, right? You have friends who will remind you of what a jerk that person was. Well, have friends that are going to remind you of what a jerk this family member was. Get yourself through this time on your own steam, leaning on friends who know who you are and love who you are because of who you are. Leaning on friends and other people in your life that have good boundaries and don't expect you to have bad boundaries just because they do and haven't inflicted years of harm on you and brushed it off saying, well, we're family, you forgive family. Family doesn't get forgiven just because they're family. Blood doesn't actually mean anything. You deserve to have people in your life that know that you're awesome just because you're you, and you deserve to have people in your life who listen to you when you try to put up boundaries and when you stand up for yourself. You deserve that, and this time of year is no different. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next time, and until then, take care of yourselves and each other. Bye.